YouTubers and travelers usually show only the good side of cruises, as if it were the dream trip, but they hide the bad things that happen inside. Travel agents also don't tell all the secrets and flaws of the companies. We are not afraid to tell you the truth and will reveal both the good and bad things about Costa Cruises. Embarkation About boarding, it got worse compared to before. Those who board in Itajai, Brazil, if they don't arrive early, face a huge queue under the sun. Do not respect the time they inform you. If they tell you to arrive at 10, arrive at 8, or you will suffer in the big queue that will be formed. Inside the departure lounge, there are fewer employees to assist at the counter than there are in Santos, Brazil, for example, and service is slow. After that you take another bus to the port. The total boarding procedure can take two hours or more. In other ports, like Santos, the process is also time-consuming, but at least no one is roasting under the scorching sun. In Santos arrive very early to get the first tickets and board faster. Buffet. After boarding around lunchtime and heading to the buffet restaurant to satisfy your hunger, you'll find yourself with a long queue at peak times and a poor buffet of options in variety, well below expectations compared to the Costa before to 2020. The waiters serve your food themselves, sometimes you put less than you want, sometimes too much, causing waste. In addition to each option being served on a separate plate, which crams your tray of dishes. The quality of the food was good, no different from the other season we traveled. The company clearly has fewer employees, as at peak hours the tables were full of dirty dishes and crockery, as well as several tables on the ship, were not cleaned frequently. It is possible that you sit at tables that are not clean and leave without cleaning. The restaurant floor was constantly dirty. Breakfast Breakfast buffet was continental and had a good variety but poorer than previous seasons, but good quality. There was constantly no ice in the machines and coffee, milk and hot water were unnecessarily served by an attendant, instead of getting as much as you wanted yourself. There were no sachets of sugar, sweetener, salt. Everything was placed in bowls and you have to help yourself with a teaspoon. There were three types of juice every day, served all you can eat until 10 a.m. Bars. They are usually full and the service is slightly slow. The tip is to look for other bars on the ship, as some tend to be less busy. Main restaurant. The restaurant where you will dine is always marked on the ship's card. But on Costa, this season, several people who took a guaranteed cabin, the most economical, did not know where they were going to have dinner, as the name of the restaurant was not marked on the card. There are also groups of friends or family who took separate tables and wanted to join them. Both joined a huge queue to find out where they were going to have dinner or put tables together. The queue lasts more than one hour and can still be interrupted by the security exercise that is done before the ship sails. This is a chronic problem at Costa. Every time, to join the tables of a group, there is a huge queue, and this could be done online. Now we have this new problem guests without a defined restaurant. After the security drill, guests waited for nearly an hour again, only to be told that the maitre d' would not return. They should show up right around dinner time. And at dinner time, another long queue and some people gave up. They went to dinner at the buffet restaurant, where there were even fewer options than at lunch. Costa does not serve water with dinner and you must buy it. Unlike other seasons, where 500 milliliters water was sold, this time only one and a half liter water was sold, which can be too much if the table is occupied by only two people. The quality of food in the main restaurant has improved a lot compared to the previous season we traveled. There are no assistants at Costa and the poor waiter has to do everything himself. Despite this, we found the service a little slow, however, faster than other companies, such as MSC, for example. Our waiter was very efficient and very friendly. Note 10 for Rahul. Costa app. Costa has an application, which works with free internet exclusively for this purpose. Or rather, it should work. Sometimes, the connection failed. For a change, Costa also eliminated printed menus, so the use of the app and virtual menu is mandatory. 
The application, which should serve for everything, is too basic, has little information and you cannot hire or purchase any service or product through it. Beverages in a glass. The wine glass did not contain the 187.5 milliliters that it usually should. When buying a bottle of wine and entering the amount that the waiter serves, it is filled six and a half times, when the correct thing is to fill the glass only four times if it had 187.5 milliliters. That is, they serve less in the cup. A glass of sparkling wine, if it contains 100 milliliters, is a lot. For $7 it is very expensive, in fact a very bad joke. The tip here is to buy a bottle of wine or sparkling wine, which costs about $30, the cheapest, and with a discount for loyal members. So the cost-benefit will be better. Cabin The cabin was not cleaned properly, the floor was dirty, the carpet was not vacuumed in the seven days of the cruise, we know that because the lint and small crumbs that fell at the beginning of the cruise stayed there until the end. Other guests complained about the same thing. Cups in the cabin were not changed, just replaced, we ran out of toilet paper two times, the cabin was only tidied and the bathroom was lightly wiped. The duvet too thick and warm for Brazil, there was no sheet. We didn't complain so as not to cause friction with the valet. We've done this on other trips and the result was disastrous. We prefer to finish the cruise and complain to the company afterwards. Reading more testimonials on the internet, we saw that several cabin categories, from interiors to balconies, experienced the same problem. You simply didn't see or hear the stewards vacuuming the cabin, only the hallways. Room service can take a long time. Checking the web you will see more identical complaints. The waiter Ryan has always been super friendly and attentive, despite failing in service. Attractions Costa replaced one of the few technological attractions it had, a Formula One simulator, with a lounge bar. And the only attraction, in quotes, modern, was a 4D cinema, which didn't work when we traveled before on the Costa Fabulosa and wasn't working again, three years later. At no time does the company inform you that the cinema is out of order before booking the trip. The good side of the ship is that it has several bars, three swimming pools, jacuzzis, and, despite being rated as the ship with the smallest square meter per guest, it has more free areas and seems to be more spacious than other companies, such as the MSC Ship Orchestra, for example, where you simply couldn't get a table or a mat in the pool area if you didn't get there by 7 a.m. At Favalosa this did not happen. Bathrooms and cleaning other areas. In the ship's bathrooms, several faucets constantly ran out of soap and the use of gel alcohol was not encouraged, only advertised on posters. Employees were not often seen cleaning the ship and we never saw them cleaning the handrails, something so important today and common to see in other companies, even during the day. Communication There is a lack of communication about important things on the ship. The cocktail of the day, advertised at a discount, no bartender knew it existed and you couldn't buy it. A waitress said it existed, as we saw it on an advertisement screen on the ship, the bartender said it didn't exist. This should have been in the ship's journal. On the day of disembarkation, we were not informed of the time to leave the cabin. Not even the pamphlet left in the cabin reported that. Disembarkation, however, was quick and organized, despite waiting for the transfer under the sun. VIP Area Costa has created an area for VIP members in the bow of the ship. This prevents you from seeing the departure of the ship from the front. It is an almost useless area after becoming a VIP, as almost no one frequents the place. The result is that the other guests ended up invading the area to watch the ship set sail. Every time we passed by, the place was deserted. So much so that a part of it was being used to store mats. When we traveled previously and there was no such separation, the place was full of guests and the space full of life. Commander's Night Usually on the captain's night, the gala night, a party is held in the center of the ship and complimentary sparkling wine and drinks are served to guests. Once again, Costa was lazy and didn't serve a single glass, in addition to putting the captain on the stern of the ship, just to take some pictures, in a weak and dull event, without the highlight and tradition that the knight and the commander deserve it. Theater shows. Theater shows haven't changed. All below average, with one of the events, The Voice of the Seas, slightly better. 
However, as in another season, they excluded one of the best singers from the competition, leaving the worst to compete with the rest. The spectators were outraged, as before. Supposedly it seems to be a pattern of the show. Entertainment team. Very weak and not very present. Not even on New Year's Eve in the stern pool did they liven up the New Year's Eve party and even the countdown started late. And not serving even a complimentary glass of sparkling wine on New Year's Eve is something we've never seen on a cruise, not even the cheapest. Photographs. Very annoying and insistent. They are surrounding guests and insisting too much. One of them even scowled when we passed him after refusing to take pictures. Costa set up photo spots in mandatory passing areas, and there were too many places to take photos. Private show. We participated in an exclusive show for loyal members. The show was very weak and bland, with music and some guest prizes. Companies usually serve complimentary drinks and cocktails on these occasions. But Costa was of no use to these members who, they say, are so special to the company. Cordiality of the crew. Despite the slow and unsurprising service, on this particular ship, the Costa Fabulosa, the crew was for the most part very cordial and friendly. Which minimized some of the problems encountered. Summary. The service has gone downhill a lot compared to our previous cruise with Costa. For those who are used to the service that Costa offered in the past, they may be disappointed with what is currently being offered. In short, traveling with Costa you will have a normal cruise, without anything innovative or that exceeds expectations. If you are prepared, you can enjoy, relax and rest your well-deserved vacation, but with fewer positive experiences and none surprising. It was a good trip, it restores energy, but nothing more.